At the outset, I welcome all the participants. The copy of corporate presentation has already been uploaded in NSP and BSP, and also in company's websites. Post completion of meeting, the copy of transcript and video recording should also be uploaded in NSP and also in website. Uh, before we formally start the meeting, I would just like to read a cautionary statement. Kindly note that some of the matters to be discussed today are forward-looking, relating to implementation of strategy actions and other formations on the future business, business development and commercial performance. In this regard, a number of these uncertainties and other important factors may cause actual development and results to vary materially from expectations. Accordingly, sale and undertakes no obligation to publicly revise any forward-looking statements to reflect in future events or circumstances as the case may be. The duration of this call is around 60 to 60 minutes. Uh, I will, before we start, I will request Chairman for his opening remarks, sir. Just before that, just make a correction, Shri Mukesh Chaudhary, Director, Director of Marketing, is joining. Uh, good, good afternoon, all. And uh, the first nine months uh, report, you see, it is highest ever nine months coal production of uh, 531.90 million ton and overburden of uh, 1,404.85 million cubic meter. With a growth in coal production, 11%, and in uh, overburden, it is 22%. Similarly, offtake also, there is a growth of uh, around 8%. It is also highest uh, to power dispatches, 454.03 million tons. Uh, highest uh, ever nine months profit. Uh, it is uh, PBT of 31,937 crores and PAT of 23,849 crores. This is also increase of PBT is rupees 1579 crores, that is 5% over previous year during the same period. Highest uh, ever nine months revenue from uh, operations and net sales. Highest ever revenue from operations of rupees uh, 1,4914 crores in nine months. An increase of 4,814 crores, that is 5% over uh, previous year. In net sales also, uh, there is an increase of uh, 4%. Besides this, uh, whether it, uh, CAPEX also, uh, uh, we have achieved, CL achieved a CAPEX of 5,702 crores compared to 4,000 last year in the last uh, quarter. And overall also, we are set to achieve 16,500 crores in this uh, financial year. And uh, CL has backed uh, around uh, 300 megawatt of solar project of Gujarat Industrial Power Corporation at Kawada, Gujarat through e-auction held on 25th January 24. And uh, besides this, there is other uh, uh, things are also market capitalization of Coal India stood at uh, rupees 2,31,719 crores on 31st December 2023. And the board has also approved, we all know, a second interim dividend of rupees 5.25 per share. With this total interim dividend for financial year 23-24 is 20.50 rupees per share. That is 205% of face value. This is uh, all about up to the first nine months. Uh, now we are open. Uh, you can ask any questions. Yeah, Mr. Amit, you can formally start the interaction, please. Thank yeah, you. please start the uh, question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets only while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Alok Deora from Monika. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, so, sir, uh, congratulations on uh, very good numbers. Uh, so, just said, uh, 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 first question was on the volume side. So, the volume so far has been very strong, and we had guided for around 7, 80 million tons. Any change on the numbers, or we would largely be achieving that? Uh, good afternoon, Sri uh, We are kept a target, this, uh, another 39 days to go. 780 million ton is our uh, target, and we are all set to go. But uh, there is uh, uh, one company, SCCL, uh, five companies are already ahead of the target. 
one company SCCL, uh, we, there is due to some land shortage initially. Uh, now there is no issue, but uh, around eight to nine million ton, we are a little bit lagging behind. That comes to around 171 million ton around uh, right now. But we are uh, some uh, few months the EC clearance is also being ended. So we are trying at, uh, for 10 percent growth is already there to keep and uh, to keep the momentum. Five companies for sure it is achieving targets. Uh, in SCCL there is an issue in uh, initially uh, mega projects, two projects, and hence uh, though there is a growth in that company, uh, more than 10, 12 percent, 13 percent growth, but the target set is to achieve 197 million ton. Last year they could achieve 162, previous year 147. So 147, 162, that is a huge jump last year, FY23. Again 25 million, again huge jump, but uh, there may be some uh, little around 10 million, 8 to 9 million gap may be there. But uh, we are trying to make up in other two, three companies at least 1 to 2 million. So uh, approximately around 770 million, it is uh, there for sure. But we are trying to keep so that uh, last 39 days, if everything goes well, so we will try to minimize the gap also. Sure. And uh, next year, again, 850 will largely maintain that target. 850, now ministry has uh, 838 because of uh, huge stocks. In oh. culture uh, field, we are adding every day 1 lakh ton stock. So our, uh, uh, the power of stock, it has grown more than 38 million ton. It is also highest uh, ever by this time in any previous year. Since uh, we, we uh, want this uh, rack supply also to be smooth, uh, somehow to four to five racks at Talcher and four to five racks at Korba field, we are getting little less. However, they, for them also there is a growth. With that growth also, coal stock at both powerhouse and at our side, both have increased this time. So with that, keeping that 838 million ton, a, uh, one target is uh, kept instead of 850, so that uh, it will again be reviewed in the uh, first week of April in uh, uh, financial year. Sure. And so uh, this uh, e-auction volume, if we see this quarter was, uh, uh, you know, close to uh, or less, quite less than uh, what we had given as a target for second half of 15% of the volumes which we'll be doing through the e-auction route. So uh, any any comments there because, uh, uh, you know, we are looking at a 15% e-auction volume in second half. Uh, so, are we? Uh, how do we see it in the fourth quarter now, and why has it been the lower side? In February, it is 17 percent. Till 15 February. Till February. Uh, till 15 February, it is 17 percent. It is close to that 15 percent. Whatever you are telling, it is close to that. But uh, subject to the demand, it may vary little, uh, plus minus. Also increase further. Uh, it may increase also in March. It was 13 percent in January, and then it has increased to 17 percent in February from 1st to 15th February. It is further increasing, and as the production is increasing, it may reach 20 also. Got it. So 4Q will be close to uh, 15 percent or so. Yeah, uh, around. Yes. Okay. Just last question. Uh, in uh, so the premium the auction premium, we saw a pretty sharp jump in the third quarter of uh, close to, oh, it go moving close to 117% or so. Uh, so that will again now uh, uh, come down uh, because of your uh, increase in the volume of through the e-auction route. How do we Not see the e-auction premium moving? Slightly, okay. slightly it will come down. Okay, okay. And uh, how has it in, been in Jan and Feb, if you can just indicate some number? Around, around 36 to 48% it is varying, but we are having it in that range. Or 36 to 48 percent. Yeah, the, for the full year, the average is around 80 percent, and for Jan hmm. and Feb, the, the premiums are less. Got it. Got it. All right. Thank you so much, on the way. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Meet Parik, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. Thank you for having my question. Uh, so uh, the first question I wanted to ask was again regarding e auction premium. So as volumes approach uh, a billion tons in two years, so what kind of e auction premium movement do you expect? Uh, and uh, once this one billion ton target is hit, it seems very imminent. 
So after that, what is the uh, could you give some guidance on that? Because all these FMC projects and all we are doing is being very possible next year. So that is the question one. Hey, this e auction premiums may vary subject to the demand, if quarter to quarter. Number one. Which is one million target? What what you are referring? One million, uh, million. shortfall one regarding million. shortfall or one billion? One billion. Now one billion we are on course. Next year it is uh, eight thirty eight million ton. It is just uh, revised, but uh, subject to the demand. Eight fifty initially one BT. It is eight fifty. Recently due to the present uh, scenario of power coal stocks, coal stocks at power plant and uh, subject to demand. It is kept as 838 million ton instead of 850 next year. So we are uh, on course to uh, achieve this, and the preparations are going both for uh, monsoon preparation also in 24 uh, monsoon. Also, we are uh, working on it. Our tenders are in place, and uh, all the arrangements to face the monsoon by May 31st will be in place, so that monsoon also there will be smooth uh, production and dispatches, and we will try to achieve 838 million next year. Right. So my, uh, I, I want to ask in the way that since one billion tons will come online, so you know that will be huge coal stock. So will that affect the demand of E option uh, coal, uh, bringing the premium down over time? Uh, is what I was asking. Definitely, if stock set power plants, if it is piled up, and our side also of stocks are there as per the demand appetite. It, it is visa vis uh, related with the appetite that uh, option premiums. Actually, that's right. Thank you. And uh, sir, uh, the second thing I wanted to ask was uh, the dividend policy. So, uh, what is what what is the dividend uh, on which you like the policy on which you divide, uh, decide dividend? Is like PAT plus non-cash expenses, including OBR, uh, and you reduce capex on that? Capex is not reduced. Dividend policy is already hosted on the website. so uh, dividend we are deciding based on the requirement and the capex in the future year accordingly we are balancing the shareholder expectation as well as the company's capex program okay and so the last question i wanted to ask was uh, indian coal in comparison to international coal could you give a comparison of what is gross calorific value there and what kind of what is the benchmark that you use for you know comparing our prices to international coal the regarding ash content you should understand indian coal is of predominantly high ash content say in uh, companies like mahanadi uh, some part of sccl ccl it may be around 42% internationally if you see some countries there may be 8 to 10% so uh, uh, same uh, level comparison cannot be there number one and uh, even if we import also import also there is a band band wise calorific value only it, it, either it is indian nation coal australian coal you see particular bands a particular gcv that is being uh, the rates are being uh, uh, numbered so it, it cannot be but in india also in ecl there are there is good quality g6 to g8 band is there where we our quality is also very good Similarly, in Mahanadi, it is little inferior, but it is very much uh, friendly to thermal power plants. So it varies. Okay, okay, sir. And what is the benchmark you use for that in, to compare the international price? Like, is it that bandwise or is it like a common benchmark that you observe? There are band bandwise. Calorific value is definitely taken into account along with ash percentage. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. uh thank you thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of dikshit doshi from whitestone financial advisors private limited please go ahead uh yeah uh so firstly uh, just a clarification you mentioned for january and february the e auction premium has come down to 30% it's around 36 to 50% in, in different companies we are getting different this thing february is still going on so so it's initial days only but around 50% was there in january and in feb okay, so for the first 15 days yeah so which is yeah, more than 100% in the q3 right more than 100% no ah q3 mate was yeah yeah okay okay uh now my uh, 
second question is uh, regarding the rare earth and the lithium and other uh, mines. So, uh, are we doing something in the Australia and also uh, in India also government is going to uh, provide such mines in JNK and other parts of India. So, what we are planning over there? In India, first I will tell, in three blocks we are going to participate for auction for exploration first. Uh, we are going to drop this uh, auction originally, the date was 21st, now it is revised to 26th. Ministry of Mines is conducting a e-auction, so we are participating in three blocks, number one. In Australia, our team has visited and uh, seen one or two areas and they are in different uh, talks. So it is in uh, preliminary stage only. Okay, in uh, India you mentioned three blocks, these are of which mineral? It, it is uh, uh, this critical minerals only, all the three. <laughs> critical minerals. Okay, so these are uh, the JNK or uh, some other part? It is not exactly JNK, different states. Uh, it is spread over. Okay. Okay, so, and uh, this uh, last date you mentioned is 26th Feb. 26th Feb. Okay. Okay, that's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> the next question is from the line of Indrajit from CLSA. Please, please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, in the press release, you have men uh, mentioned that you are looking to change the accounting policy for shipping activity adjustment. So if you can highlight uh, what exactly are we trying to do here and what could be the impact? Uh, this is uh, in correspondence to international uh, accountancy standards. So th there is some observations going on last three to four years. We wanted to rectify and follow the international accounting policy. So we have adopted this and we are uh, going to comply the standards as mentioned in international standards of accounting yeah, and India. along with in Indian context and uh, chartered, Indian chartered uh, Institute of, chartered. Institute of uh, chartered Accountants also. We have referred, we have taken opinion and we are following that. So in that case, sir, OBR uh, stripping activity adjustment amount will go to zero or how will it happen? So for three years, uh, preceding three years, we have taken into account uh, for correction. And uh, going forward, we uh, by implementing the st standards mentioned, we will be taking the uh, uh, course and we are uh, following this. Uh, as per the institution, uh, we have consulted the institution of chartered accountants and uh, with their uh, advice and uh, this uh, uh, legal uh, uh, advice we have taken and we are following that. And uh, lastly, sir, on the stripping activity adjustment, because it's a non-cash provision, do we get tax shield on this? As in, is it an allowable expenses under tax, uh, income tax act? Actually, this is a case, uh, different companies are situated in different states, and different uh, income tax authorities have taken different view. In some of the cases, it has already been disallowed, so we had already paid the tax, and in some of the cases it has been allowed. So overall it will be some impact on the taxation front, but uh, it will be not much impact because of some of the cases it has been allowed, and some of the cases it has been not allowed, disallowed. So it will be a mix. So some impact will be there when we will assess the, what will be the total quantum at the year end. Accordingly, taxation can be worked out. Sure. And lastly, on the balance sheet, there is a significant liability we have on this, right? So if and when that gets reversed, there could be a tax implication on that as well, right? As I already mentioned, that impact will we are working on it, and if the reversal will take place, then naturally some income tax impact will come in uh, in the current year. Sure. Thank you so much. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Lahodi from MK. Please go ahead. Thanks for taking my question. Sir, what is your CAPEX target for FY24 and 25? It is uh, almost 17,500 crores. This year for it is both the years? 1,000 more, 17,500. And my second question is on the strike that happened last week. So do we have any update there? What is going on? There is strike only on for one single day. Uh, some uh, four unions have given. 
So this is with respect to the national level issues also, not primarily to coal India. As a uh, countries, uh, some other issues they have in uh, uh, for uh, one day they have for uh, they have gone for as per their party's instruction they have participated. But almost 80 to 85 percent uh, production at some subsidies it is even 95 percent also we achieved. Only marginal impact was there. Okay, thank you. I'm done. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Venkatesh Subramanian from Logitree Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, so, good afternoon. Uh, congratulations on a good performance. Sir. And we are uh, actually quite impressed with the way Coal India is evolving as a company. Such a large company performing so beautifully. Best wishes to you, sir. That's one. And uh, so my question is in terms of this E option premiums, I know that it, we can't really measure it quarter on quarter. But la until December, we had a 116% premium in terms of year. And suddenly, you are talking about 40 to 50. Is there any particular reason why it's happening that way? And what do you estimate it for the fourth quarter going forward? I mean, the next quarter. Actually, the premiums, they are linked. They were earlier being linked with the imported coal prices. So when the imported coal prices for this band of 4,200 went up and down, the premiums also moved in tandem with them. Now, with increased availability of domestic coal, the, mm -hmm. the premiums have started now actually getting away from the linkage with the imported coal prices. And 48% mm -hmm. uh, was from 1st January to 15th February we have received. So maybe in the month of January somewhere it was around 60% or so. Okay. And going, uh, going ahead, we think this is going to be the order of the day, uh, uh, somewhere around 40 to 50. So that's why we have actually started the non-regulated sector linkages once again, which we start, used to do every year. Now we have started means, uh, twice in a year. So after completion of the sixth tranche, we already started seventh tranche and sponge iron, cement, uh, and these subsectors have already been completed and CPP sector is right now going on. So, okay. so in, order, in order to look for more non-power consumers, we are offering uh, more rounds of uh, NRS linkages and we are conducting them even more frequently. Okay, so which means that, uh, you know, so far our realization is broadly, the blended realization is about 1,724 per ton. So considering that going forward, uh, the auction premiums might moderate downwards, would you still uh, have some strategy internally to maintain the overall realization, sir, for in FY25? Uh, the overall realization means that we have to offer more coal to the non-regulated sector where the premiums are very high. We, we are getting locked in at around 48 percent or so, uh, okay. around 30 to 40%, which earlier used to be somewhere around 10 to 20%. percent. And okay. uh, volumes, volumes are going to help us. Okay, so broadly we should be able to uh, maintain, because also we have uh, quite a lot of capex plans. I don't think it's a cost for worry, according to you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay, super. So second question is 80,000 crores of CapEx you have planned for the next few years. Most of it will be internal accruals, sir? Uh, it is uh, b b b other. One is land acquisition and uh, this FMC projects, railway lines, and coal okay. gasification is also coming. Once this is materialized, one uh, coal gasification along with the BHL, we are uh, in a JV. One is with yeah. Gale, we are in a JV. So mm -hmm. all this uh, come to and solar, uh, we are going for uh, initially 3,000 megawatts. Subsequently, we will increase. Primarily, <coughs> diversification project will be a basket of the internal export and the debt, whereas the, all the expansion in the coal mines will be met from the internal accruals. Okay, but considering that uh, the kind of projections we have for FI25 and FI26, predominantly, I think, internal accruals should take care of most of our needs. Would that be a right assumption, sir? Uh, uh, yeah, you are right uh, because uh, we had just started the renewable, so not much uh, debt will come in the 25, but in the coming year, debt will increase in the renewable and uh, gasification projects. Okay. And do you have any plans, sir, going forward once we have coal, uh, we have fill energy, and then we have uh, we are investing a lot in terms of alternative energy as well? Would you have that as a separate demerged entity or something in the in the future? We had already some verticals are there for the renewable energy and the other projects. For mm -hmm. that, we had already subsidiaries companies are there. We had already formed the joint ventures and the new companies. 
those okay. will pursue that. We are not going to create any new subsidy. It is not in our discussion right now. Okay, sir. My last question is, sir, go, um, as per your internal blueprint uh, strategic thinking, sir, where do you expect uh, the broad price trend of coals over the next one or two years, sir? Just, just a broad estimate. We don't need looking for not looking for accurate figures because it's market determined. But uh, what is your internal estimate where you think it will settle down, sir, coal? It's likely to stabilize at the current levels, and, and then it will depend on uh, some many future events also which are coming. In 2036, mm -hmm. which country is going to be the the uh, country where Olympics are going to be hosted, and many other issues are there. But as of now, we understand that the current levels have stabilized, and it should uh, this trend should continue at least for a year or so. Okay, fine, super, super. So thank you so much for taking my questions, sir. All the best. Thanks. The next question is from the line of Amit Murarka from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. So uh, my question is a bit longer term. So uh, like uh, at our level, we are looking to raise coal production to a billion tons, and then we have uh, a lot of private captive coal mines, which are also uh, seeing a rise in production over the next couple of years. So if, let's say, like uh, what I understand is you're saying that there is some uh, coal uh, coal stocks have increased. So in, in, go, in years ahead, when more capital production comes in, like uh, how do you think uh, there will be marketability of all this increased production that you have? And could it lead to like a structural uh, decline in the auction premiums in the country? Just some thought on that. Demand is increasing. You should understand the overall demand is there. So uh, temporarily, sometimes the auctions, uh, sometimes the accumulation is there and the monsoon is also will be coming. So for sure, demand is also at this pace of growing, and we are also doing 10% growth. Even other players are also coming. They have to meet the demands. This impact, imports can be reduced. 80,000 megawatt plants are coming. 80,000 megawatts uh, power plants are coming by 2030. And, and already we are asked to give 50 million ton more to power this year. Uh, this year uh, we are giving more to power plants and next year also power plant okay. projection is 50 million ton more. Okay. So there is demand. So there may be temporary phases uh, in the supply of racks. But overall you can see appreciate in the last two years, coal India is growing in double digit. No, absolutely. I completely appreciate that and congratulations. But my question was more on that side only, that if supply is growing more than 10%, and obviously there is growth of renewables and also coal demand per se, like can it meet the supply growth or like will it lack the supply growth? Is, is there some thought that you have or some work that you've done on that? Then it will not lag. It will be definitely meeting the demands and you can appreciate the imports are not increased in uh, uh, thermal coal. 200 billion tons we need to sell. One, one more factor will play in the coming year. As the economy is growing all around, infrastructure is growing, the demand of the power is going to bound to increase. So one factor, this dem increasing demand per capita will lead to this factor. And on the other hand, new power sectors which are coming will also multiply the demand. So ultimately, it will increase the demand for the coal. Sure. So, and also on import substitutability, uh, substitutability uh, like how much of coal like coming from Indonesia or wherever you think can, can be replaced with domestic coal? Around 50 million ton of coking coal which is coming to the country may probably continue because of the limited availability of high-grade coking coal required by steel sector. And there are certain plants on the coast which are actually based on imported coal for their generation. Their boilers are designed accordingly. So these plants may also continue to have imported coal. But other than that, we are still looking for a target of somewhere around 175 to 200 million tons of coal which is a substitutable type of coal, which if available at the right prices at the right time, should be able to substitute that. So not only the current domestic demand, but also the 200, 225 million ton which the country is importing. That also is uh, uh, being targeted by us so, so that we reduce our reliance on imports. So, so the entire that 150, 200 million ton is replaceable because a lot of that will be like coastal plants and all, as you said. Uh, this is what we said, 225. So out of that 225, somewhere around 50 million tons we'll get for coking coal and another 
25 to 40 million tons may be somewhere uh, coastal. For, uh, for coastal fans or maybe some of the consumers who require specifically very high. So in case of high grade also, we have now started offering high grade coals from our side to non-regulated sector consumers who want high grade coal like cement sector, etc. So, so, so this also in a planned way, we are targeting those consumers who are actually importing high GCV coal. Got it, got it. And just the last one, like, uh, could, uh, lo and some logistics and all uh, will also need to be uh, improved, uh, whatever the availability and all those issues that we've seen in the past. The logistics are under uh, improving uh, regularly, whether it is uh, commissioning of railway lines and the sidings, FMC projects. Similarly, in land and environmental clearances also, we are uh, uh, almost continuously pursuing, and all the overall uh, we are going to meet it. National Coal Logistics Policy. Under the National Coal Logistics Plan, it is being implementation. It is under implementation. Got it, got it. Thanks a lot for all the answers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Siddharth Gadekar from Equilius. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. So first one, the washery part, uh, so can you give an update on what is happening on that side of the business and when can we see some higher volumes on the beneficated coal part? Washeries part, uh, we are having few washeries under construction. One Madhuband washery is uh, recently completed, commissioned. Uh, right now we are doing 5,000 tons per day, new washery. And uh, two more washeries in BCCL are under uh, construction on Bojudi. Bojudi, uh, it may be commissioned by July. So once it is completed next year, there will be increase in uh, washing part. And uh, one more uh, washery is under started under construction Patadi 2. But uh, after uh, a period of two years, the coking coal share will be green. Last year, we are uh, around 10 to 12 percent more than last year, but uh, significant increase will be coming after the commissioning of new washeries. Mm -hmm. In CCL also, two washeries we have given uh, LOA, uh, both Dori and Katara. Some uh, EC and other uh, statutory compliance are in uh, underway. Once this is done, for two years it will be constructed. Uh, maybe FY27, uh, there will be a growth from present level of 1.5 1, 1. to 2 million washed coal. We will be going to around 6 million to 7 million after two years. In Mahanade, one uh, non coking coal washery just uh, recently commissioned in uh, Lakanpur. That is a 10 million ton uh, non coking coal washery. Uh, there is uh, de demand and uh, agreement with AP, Genco, and other uh, Genco's. So uh, it has trial run has completed. So it will be a 10 million ton non coking coal washery is added in our kitty. So once all these capacities come online, maybe FY27, 28, what could be the peak of no, benefited coal that we can produce? Uh, our, uh, our target is around 8 million ton by uh, FY30, but FY27, 28, it may be around uh, 6 million. Of coal. Of coal. Okay. Yes. Other okay. This, okay got it. This uh, non-coking coal, which I mentioned uh, in Lakanpur, that is already commissioned. It will add. Uh, in this 24-25, uh, FY25, it will be doing its uh, complete uh, as per capacity. All right. So secondly, on the e-auction part, uh, uh, what has driven the e-auction rise in the third quarter? Because if you look at international prices also, they were relatively subdued during 3 q So why did the e-auction premium jump very sharply in the third quarter? The third quarter, if you see the power plant stock has come down to the bare minimum in the month of September, it has uh, gone down below 19 million ton also. So, so, and and the peak demand in the country at that point of time has hit 240 gigawatts, which was the highest uh, ever. So, so there was a substantial pull at that point of time. Okay, okay, that's ordered. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Kejriwal from Nuama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and many congratulations for the work which we have been doing for the last few years. So uh, three questions from my side. Uh, one is, uh, obviously, employee costs we have guided earlier that we could end up with around 46,000 crores. So uh, are we still uh, maintaining the guidance, or is there any change for this year? And if you can get a sense, give us a sense on 
next years what could be the global employee cost depending on the situation that now uh, 4 to 5 percent employees are uh, uh, retiring every year that's my first question sir. as the super innovations and additions of employees are taking place uh, it is bound to come down. We are expecting this year uh, employees' cost will be less than the last year to the tune of around 2,000 per round rupees. And it will continue, the trend will continue in the near future uh, also. Okay, so it's uh, fair to assume that FY25 employee cost would be at best equal to FY24 or less? Yes, yes, you can uh, say. Okay, okay, thank you. And secondly, sir, when we are talking about 17,500 crore capex target for FY25, uh, is it possible to give some kind of breakdown uh, between power and non-power, uh, between coal and non-coal? Right now, it is not available. We will forward it. Okay, great. And sir, thirdly, uh, for e option price, uh, we mentioned that you know, in, I think Jan, uh, the average e option premium was something like 54%. But in absolute terms, I think it's around 2,700 rupees per ton. So when we are talking about 36, 40 percent premium, uh, is it possible to quantify on an absolute term? Because sometimes, you know, because of the grade also, things change materially. So uh, is it possible to quantify on absolute terms what's happening in February? Uh, it's difficult to quantify on absolute terms because in the last quarter, we have asked the coal companies to offer around 20% of their monthly production there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the monthly production in absolute numbers, what we are getting is it's huge uh, in Maharadi coal fields and SCCL where the grades are not very high. So, so, so as of now, it will be very difficult to quantify it in absolute numbers. Uh, going ahead, maybe by middle of March or so, we will be in a position to get those numbers. Okay, so uh, you mean to say that because the gates are low, volumes are high, and that's the reason premium could be lower? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, that's great, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ketan Jain from Evan Dispar. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, this 838 metric tons of target next year, is it production or dispatch target? It is production and dispatch also at the same range it will be there. It is already 780, 780. So it is almost the same. Okay. And uh, next year also 15% of the dispatch will be e-auction, right? Yes. Uh, more error, that, error. Maybe even more because if you are able to meet the demand, then, this, then, then the additional coal will definitely take it out in the auctions. Okay. And uh, possibility of giving that 15% uh, within that how much will be regulated the portion and non-regulated non portion by volume? As of now, we have got a requirement of 661 million ton for the regulated power sector. Power sector. And then we have got FSA commitments, uh, a crude supply agreement, long-term commitments of somewhere roughly around 100 million ton for non-regulated sector. And, and, and the balance quantities are always there, but it depends uh, out of this 100 million ton also, it depends on the demand and supply position for the consumer side. So uh, you can say that out of uh, 838, 661 is our commitment for regulated sector. The rest all should go to non-regulated sector under different modes, either FSAs or through e-auctions. Okay, okay, understood. And um, when you're talking about the CAPEX for 2025 at 17,500 crores, uh, when I compare this number with the number given in the interim budget, uh, that came uh, in, in the beginning of this month for Coal India. It said uh, 15,500 as the capex uh, in that interim budget. So what is the reason for the difference between 15,500? It may vary because uh, solar also we are going and uh, other uh, new initiatives. It is just 1,000 in a year. It can be uh, slightly... The so figures have been submitted some three, four months before. Later on, we had fine-tuned. Okay, okay. So, the uh, actual number could be 17,500. Yeah, error. It is optimistic. Right. And just to get a sense of, of the overall coal dispatch or production volume that uh, Coal India does, what proportion would be this um, uh, majority of the grades that we uh, produce, which is grade 5, 6, 7? Sorry, grade and, uh, 9, 8, 9, 8 is, uh, 9, 10, 11 is what we produce the most. What will be the pro proportion of this grades on the overall volumes? 
11 to 17 is 70 percent. That is the most uh, uh, abundant quantity going for the thermal plants. Okay. 11 to 17 is the most abundant and 70 percent. Okay. And uh, typically, how what grade is e-auction coal? That is it. All, all, all grades, all grades. All subsidiaries they offer some quantity of, uh, from their production. So, so all grades are being offered depending on the volumes which are being produced. So I'm asking uh, in e-auction which is the predominant grade? In auction. Naturally, because of that only the the G11 to G17 because more quantities uh, offered. A, a, everything yeah, is being offered on proportionate basis. So the okay. So the same 70 percent proportion is in e-auction also. Uh, exactly. As of now, I don't have those figures, but it should go accordingly. Because all subsidies they are offering uh, some around 10 to 20 percent of their annual production for e-auction. No, what I'm asking is in e-auction also the grade mix is the same. That is G11 to G17 makes up 70 percent of sales through e-auction also. I can explain. Just say in MCL, there is no uh, G7, G6 grade. So 100 percent whatever in their 15 percent, it is 100 percent it is G11 to G17. Similarly, if you go to ECL, maybe it may be varying, G6, G7, G8, their production in Sonpur Bajari. So, it is a subsidiary specific, but overall as a, a coal India, you can see 15% is general uh, what we are uh, offering. Grades may vary, percentage. Okay. Uh, my next question is on uh, employee cost. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, may we request you to return to the question queue for the follow-up questions, as there are several. But uh, uh, you let you let many people ask several questions. Uh, sir, you should have rescheduled them also, right? So there are still several other. Uh, I know. What I'm asking is, you you let others also ask five six questions. Sir, I'm not. No, I'm just, uh, No, I understand. Can this is Varani from Avendas. I understand, but. Uh, can you make it fast, Mr. Kesan? Can you make it this fast, please? Eh? Yeah, so just uh, asking when we would be expecting the employee cost uh, hike uh, next? Uh, not, no. Uh, definitely not in these two years. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Gupta from IAFL Securities. Please go ahead. Um, so just one question I have. Uh, in your presentation in the balance sheet, the receivables has uh, jumped quite a bit. So was it 13,000 crores, start of the year to 17,000 crores now. Uh, what is driving that and where do you think it will settle given that you have excess inventory at your and at departments as well? This, uh, we are trying to pursue with all the uh, agencies, whether it is NTPC, DVC, we are in continuous touch and we want to release also. But uh, so, so some uh, at places, Tenugat we have recently settled, long pending, in case of Jharkhand. Similarly with DVC, WPDCL, we are in Mahajanko, we are in constant touch. So it is more or less equal in the same range, not much of uh, accumulating more than that. Okay. okay. That's all for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prachi Chopra from CT Group. Please go ahead. Thank you. Just on the e-auction, uh, is there a cap on what how much you can sell in the e-auction market? Uh, normally, uh, Coal India is mandated to offer at least 10% of the production for e-auctions in order to develop the spot markets. But if the uh, requirements of power sector and the linkage consumers of non-power is met, then this volume can increase up to 20% of their production. Okay. And on the, uh, uh, you know, on the linkages or on the FSA, so for the power and the non-power sector, your, uh, you know, you get penalized at uh, below 80% or below 90%? 75%. Both power sectors. Well? As well as, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, so so long as you uh, supply 75% on even there is no penalty. So that's what you're basically required to supply. Yeah, on both sides. So just, sorry, just to take this a little forward. So the fact that your e-auction volumes are going up obviously means that you are supplying closer to the ACQ, right? Right, not 75%. Yeah. Okay. And just last question, on the uh, target that you have for 838 million tons next year, uh, what is the breakup of the power and non-power as well as, I mean, you know, from a growth perspective, breakup or growth either? Uh, 
661 power, power. you have already mentioned nrs it is 100 balance 67 also going to the same nrs sector uh, so out of uh, power regulated sector prices is 661, 661 is the requirement they have given and the balance will go to non power in 661 also we uh, some of the coal we sell under shakti for options for short term power etc so but that basket is different and what is our number for the 780 for this year what is the power requirement 7, like was 780 610 was the power requirement we are going to supply more than that and thank you very much thank you the next question is from the line of jitaksh gupta from tikri management please go ahead Sir, uh, I have two questions. One is that your target is 838 million ton based on the demand projection. In case if the demand goes up beyond 838 million, will Coal India will be in a position to supply more? Uh, definitely, Coal India will be in a position. We we are continuously pursuing other clearances and other logistics. Uh, 100 million stock over. We are having 100 million, maybe 85 million stock by this March. So we have to see the dispatches also in place. So based on the our stock position at our end, power plant end, and 838 whatever is given, 838 is also almost it is 8 to 9 percent growth. If uh, demand is there, then definitely we will also try to liquidate, uh, liquidate the stock and we'll uh, meet the demand. Sir, my second question is that uh, the FSA coal price increase was in 2018. Is there any proposal to increase it uh, uh, the FSA coal price? No, right now there is nothing. Eight percent we increase from G1 to G10, but that's it. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shweta Dixit from Systematics Group. Please go ahead. Hello, <coughs> sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to uh, communicate to be the capex number and the capex plan for next uh, two years, like FY twenty five and twenty six, and uh, any visibility on the volume numbers for FY twenty six. Is there a target set? Uh, it is more or less in the same range with slight increase. Once our uh, coal gasification and other things materialize, it may be eighteen thousand, eighteen thousand five hundred range. Uh, this uh, depends on the project uh, execution uh, fixation of the uh, operator who, who or uh, gets it and once it is started every year we will be till we increasing till the finishing of that project so we can assume like uh, if you say uh, i mean is it expected to remain flat or we can take a nominal growth of around 4 to 5% or lower than that Madam, initially when the project starts, at that time the capex growth very sharp rise. But after two to three years in the power sector, when the project is, is uh, about to commission, then the capex goes down. And similarly in the solar, when the project is going, first two years the capex will be very fast, and then the it will slow down. So it will be uh, almost increasing for next three to four years, and then after that it will come down. So sorry, sir. I was talking about volumes for FI 26. Actually, that is where I was uh, using Doctor, a quote. Around number. 18 thousand, madam. As you are telling, 17 thousand 500 uh, next year. Uh, uh, in FI 26, it will be around 18 thousand. 18 thousand. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anubam Gupta from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, Mr. Gupta, your line is unmuted. You can proceed with your question. I uh, probably we may take the last question as we are running short of time. Okay. Sure. The next question is from the line of Darshan Gangar from First Water Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity, uh, sir. Can you throw some light on your upcoming thermal power plant and whether the capex you mentioned includes that capex or is different? Uh, uh, in uh, MBPL, uh, some capex is included next year. In MBPL, in MPGCL, uh, one uh, into six sixty megawatts, we are uh, right now not included. Uh, that is why that thousand uh, course numbers may vary, uh, subject to the progress of the project. 
in both the projects we are uh, in touch with the state governments and uh, here land acquisition is also going on in uh, mbpl uh, in mpgcl uh, our uh, uh, final uh, pmc ntpc we are fixing as a pmc consultant in both the cases but uh, in mpgcl it has uh, progress is little less but mbpl the progress is going on subject to that uh, finalization of the contract uh, in a year time then uh, once they start then the capex may vary in the next 2 3 years okay so total around 4000 megawatt of capacity is going to come there 4000 we are not mbpl also first phase it is only 2 into 800 megawatt 1600 megawatt only okay what thank you thank you thank you uh, as there are no further questions i would now like to hand the conference over uh, to the management for closing comments so thank you all uh, for your uh, question and uh, answers from our side we thank you all and uh, you can see the first 9 months uh, performance and we are optimistic to achieve this uh, to maintain the double digit growth in production and uh, dispatches definitely we are trying to do 39 to 40 days are left for this financial year to close if the 10 million can also we are trying to make up from others to whatever extent is possible but with maintaining with almost close to 10% growth in case of production and dispatches also 8% power plant target for dispatches we are ahead of the target similarly over button uh, almost 19% growth is there so that uh, we are preparing for next year also thank you okay thank, thank you. you thank you on behalf of icici securities that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your lines <laughs>